Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome everyone to ITDR World One Zero Three, and today we are discussing about Lecture Two, that should cover the topic sets, logic, and algorithm. In today's session, we will discuss about the first topic, which is sets, where we where we will introduce the terminologies and notation about sets. We'll describe we will see how we can describe a set using enumerated form predicate form Venn diagram and then we'll discuss about the properties of sets and sets operation now the last two points which is laws of sets and the power set it shall be discovered inshallah in our next session so in order to start our session today we need first to define what do we mean by a set and I know that all of you use this terminology in our daily life and whenever we say a set we know that we have a number of items in one place now those number of items have a relation all right let's say for example summer month summer month is a kind of sets where we have a specific month that comes in summer season and actually they are june july and august now the way we write the items inside this inside a group to be set it has to be in a specific shape and we would really do this in three in three ways and here we use the first way to express a set which is listing all right so here we list the month that comes under summer season so we need to show that the set starts from here and ends here and it's exactly have three items where we saw that we are using the comma to separate those items so in order to write a set we should have curly bracket at the start and at the end of the set then we use comma to separate the items now here we can see that we have three items or we call them under sets they are elements of the summer month set and for for sure every set should have a name and we usually use a capital letter to represent the name of a set so from here we introduce that a set is a collection of well-defined and related items and we mentioned that items under sets called elements now how we can represent an element of a set we can use one a new merated form as we saw already which is the kind of listing we can use predicate form and we will introduce this after a while and finally we can use the then diagram to visualize my set now in order to see how each uh, representations is let's take this example where we need to list even numbers
where they are. Less than. Okay, so my question is we need to write a set to list the even numbers which they are less than 10. Using the enumerated form, we should write the set first set name starting with the curly bracket and then listing the even numbers which they are less than 10. So if we can see here, they are 2, 4, six and eight so we need to close the set enumerated form is where we list the elements of a set that have a common factor two comma four comma six comma and eight now in the predicate form we will have to write the set as a property, all right? So we need to find a property to define the set elements. And we start with curly bracket, then we mention the elements. So X is the element of the set. Now we can say that this is for all X, that X is even, this is the first property, it is even, and x is less than 10, greater than 0. So here, we describe the property of the elements under this set. So here, we list the element itself. And here we use the property to describe what does this set, uh, the element. The element of set. Now in Venn diagram, we usually have to draw a circle and we write the elements of the set inside the circle. So here we have two, four, six, and eight. And this is the Venn diagram. Sometimes we might have those collection as a undefined number of items. For example, if we got the same as what we discussed earlier, which is set of even numbers. And it doesn't mention here the range of those even numbers. All right. And it does also, it doesn't mention if they are positive or negative. So we can represent the set as, here we go minus numbers minus four sorry minus uh, all right minus two two four and we can say that those are unlimited set which means i have another negative even numbers before minus two and they had a, a and they have further positive number after four. So we usually use this as to mention that there were are more elements. And we call this as ellipse. Which they are the three dots. All right. We have another example where we've got a range. For example, set of positive even numbers less than 100. Sorry, no brackets. All right. So here we got the same. 
However, we have here some limitations or some property, which are, they are positive and they are less than 100. So we can represent this set as they are positive, so we'll start from 2, 4, 6. And then there is a number of even numbers until we reach the last number that this than 10. So we can have the three dots here in the middle. And then we mention the last number, which is 98. So here we just list all the positive even numbers that they are less than 100. And we use the benefit of emphasis, which is the three dots that mention we have a range of numbers here starting from 6 to 89. So, as we mentioned earlier, we have three ways to represent a set, which is enumerated form, as we got here, and we have a predicate form where we explain the property that divine, defines the element of a set, and finally, Venn diagram. And here are some information about Venn diagram, which is a picture of a set, which called Venn diagram. It's introduced by John Venn, who used symbolic logic to illustrate principles of logic. Now, Venn diagrams are easy to use for two or three sets. For more than three sets, those diagrams can become more complicated, all right, and not easy to use. In further examples, we will see a uh, how we can use a Venn diagram for more than one uh, set. Now let's discuss about a sample of a special sets that we've got in mathematics, and we certainly use them. N, which is the set of all natural numbers, what they are, one, two, three, four, and so on. J represent the set of integers, which they are minus numbers, zero, positive numbers then we got q which is set of rational number where we use here predicate form to explain so this set is has an element x for all x that equal to m divided by n and m is an integer n is not a zero r is a set of real number that compile all of these together and finally phi which is the null set or empty set and this set that has no element can be written as brackets with nothing inside or we can write it as predicate that always become a false all right now the universal set Universal set is such kind of sets that donate by, as you can see here, U, capital U, which contains all the elements that could be under this, under discussion in the particular situation. Do you remember the example that we mentioned about the summer month? So summer months is a particular situation where we list that they are June, July, and August. Now the universal set of this particular situation is the whole month, which they, they are January, February, March, April, May, June, the 12 months that we have under a year. So you can be changes according to circumstances. And if we are, for example, this example that we mentioned, if we are dealing with month of a year, then U is starting from January until December. If we are dealing with the numbers, then the universal set might be real number, which is the set of all numbers with uh, respect to the type of those numbers. So let's move to the next point, which is 
another special kind of uh, set which is subset and then we will have a look on set operations and Venn diagram now before we try to find what do we mean by subsets by explaining this example let's just first identify the word subset now if we got the two sets a and b and every element of b is an element of a then b is a subset of a and it's written like this now let's check the example here we've got three sets the first set which is a it has the elements two one three and four all right now if we want to draw b then we should know the elements of b and they are one three four now a really important note under venn diagram which is we cannot write an element twice in a, in one venn diagram so whenever i have the element repeated in two sets then it should be intersect so in our example here b has the element one three and four and they already written where in a so all what i need is just draw a intersect circle here and this is the b so here we can see that b has three elements which are one three four and they are already on in a set now c have four five six four is already here so we'll draw one circle as c and then we'll draw the rest as five and six here now if you can see all the elements of b are elements of a that's why b is a subset of a however a is not a subset of b because 2 is an element of a but not an element of b what is more c also is not a subset of a and c is not a subset of b because the elements 5 and 6 are not mentioned in B and A and also the vice versa. So here is the concept of subset. Now the properties of a set. All right. We've already mentioned that subset is when all element of Let's say set one is in set two. So this is the concept of subset. Now, from this, we can see that every set is a subset of itself. So we can say that A is a subset of A. This property one. All right. Now, for any set A, phi is always a subset, right? For any set A, it's true that phi is a subset. We mentioned that phi is an empty set, which is a set without elements, all right? Okay, now we say that A is equal to b then we know that a is a subset of b which means all the elements of a are in b and b is a subset of a which is all the elements of b is in a therefore we can say that a is equal to b and b is equal to a and note under set order is not important okay what do we mean by this 
if we got a set that has three elements which they are one two three then obviously this this set is equal to two one three where the order is not not important another thing is repetition is not allowed again what do you mean by this we mean that if we have a set that has one two one then writing the set as this is wrong it should be one and two so this is two important properties under set which they are order is not important so if we write two sets in different order with the same element it should be equal and also we cannot repeat the elements under any set now let's discuss a little bit about the set operations now we've already got that operations for arithmetic as you know plus minus uh, multiply division how about under sets what are those operations when the intersection intersection in of a two sets can be written as this predicate form and it's usually represents by the following sample which is the upside down u and intersect means for all x that x is an element of a and x of is an element of b so intersection is all the elements that are matchable between a and b Sometimes we do have two sets that do not have any matchable elements, which means no elements are in A and B. So we call this as disjoint set, where the intersect is equal to phi. Union, the second operation where we have U as it is, all right? And here we say that for all elements of X, that X is element of A or X is an element of B. So here we have and, and here we have or. So union is combining all the elements of A and B. Intersect is defining all the elements are common in A and on B. And here all we mean are exclusive. We will explain this word later. Finally, the complement, sorry, it's not finally, before the final. The complement of a set A consists all the elements of the universal set and they are not in A. And we usually write it as set name dash. So it represents all the X, which is elements that are in universal but not in the set a and the final operation is the difference of two sets where we have the elements in a but not b and keep in your mind that a minus b is not as b minus a all right and we can express this uh, operation as the following venn diagram where we means that all the elements of A are not in B. So that A minus B is also equal to A intersect B complement. Now in order to understand all these operations, let's see this example. We've got E as A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, and A is A, B, C, D, f g b b d f i j and c a c f j and here we need to find first a union c so in order to do this we need to list all the elements of a which they are a b c d e f and g 
and the elements of C, which they are A. Now, I cannot write A again because it's already here. So, A, C is also already here, F is already here, and J is not there. So, here we got the set of A union C. <coughs> Sorry. Now, let's see A intersect B. For A intersect B, we need to find the elements that are an element of A and an element of B. And we've got here. B is mentioned as an element of A and also element of B. So here we've got B. Then we have D and F. So the intersect between an A and B is B, D, F. Now the intersect between A and C is the common elements between set A and set C is A, C, F, and that's it. All right. How about B intersect? A union C. So what we need to do is first we need to find a intersect B because they are under the bracket then union C now a intersect B sorry B intersect A is B D and F now we need to union this with C so here we got that this is equal to A B C D, F, and J. So we list the intersect first, then we add them to the C. All right. Now, in order to find here, we need first to finish the whatever we had under the bracket. Then we go for the outside. So here we got A union C intersect B. Now, what are the elements are in B and C? We've got that the elements on B and C are F and J. Now, A union F and J is equal to A, B, C, D, E, F, and J. And here we saw the basic operations for sets, which they are intersection, union, complement, and difference. And for sure, we will discuss further examples later on. So here we reach the end of the session, where we discussed about the terminology and notations about set, and we saw how we can represent a set using enumerated form, predicate form, Venn diagram, and then we discussed about the properties of set, set operations, and that's it. Now, we'll see you, inshallah, in the next session after, after, by discussing the laws of set and the power set. Stay safe. See you then. Thank you so much.